we went from this to this in just eight months. In this video, we will show you the blood, sweat, and beers that went into it. Blood, sweat, and tears. It's tears. I said what I said, and I said what I meant. What is up, you guys? It is Lauren and Sam. We are the trailer couple dedicated to that simple life. Today, we are gonna show you a little bit about our RV-friendly piece of land. We've been getting a ton of questions from you guys about it, and so we finally feel like we are at the place where we can show it off a little bit. Right now, we got septic tank, check. Full hookups, check. Cute plants, check. Check, and then uh, we've got some shade, kind of. We will talk about all of this and more in today's video, and at the end, we will discuss one thing that we really dislike about our setup. So. Buckle up, cowboys and girls. It's gonna get crazy. Now, before we get going on this, you will be seeing lots of footage of Laura and I playing cornhole in this video. And the only reason we're doing that is so that we can settle the score once and for all who is the better cornhole player. So before we get going, please vote down below in the comments who you think is better. And at the end of the video, we will actually share that information with you and so we can see if you were right or not. All right, so let's catch you all up on our land. It all started with number one, finding a piece of land that had no HOA, no covenants, and no restrictions. If you're curious about how that process went, you can check out this video here because let me tell you that was no walk in the park. Once we had our little chunk of paradise, the dirt work began to level out a spot for our RV pad. And when I say dirt work, I mean a lot of dirt work. If you have any questions about how we built our RV pad, you can check out this video right here. But we really had to do a lot of dirt work to level out the spot because our piece of land has a significant slope on it. So this also caused us to have to put in a small landscaping wall to help with that slope. So again, check out the video here if you have any questions about how we did it. And we did our best to blend that landscaping wall into the existing property to make it as aesthetic and functional as possible. We wanted the dirt work to slope away from the pad. So especially on our lot that is sloped down, if we didn't do that, we would have a substantial amount of water that actually drained onto our pad. So that is something to really think about if you're gonna be doing this project yourself is where is the water gonna go during those heavy rainstorms? And so far ours has done a pretty good job of diverting the water. Last spring, we actually put down some grass seed and I think it's coming together pretty nicely. Yeah, and so far our RV pad has actually held up great. I think the only downside is that we do have some weeds coming up through the gravel. Um, next time we could choose to lay down some landscaping paper or cardboard to help with that, um, but we chose not to this time and we've heard that that landscaping paper I mean it disintegrates pretty quickly so again an option for next time but something we chose not to do this time but I can tell you that I get to listen to some great podcasts while I'm pulling weeds out of the gravel pad so that's been really nice oh. <laughs> I think I'm winning yeah yeah by a lot I think so you're winning by a lot? I'm pretty sure. We function off of a septic system. So initially we had to elevate our pad so that when we empty our RV tanks, it drains downhill. That was very important for us. I guess you could theoretically take a pump and pump your sewage up to your septic tank, but that was just another link of the chain that we didn't want to worry about. It's just one more thing that can break in the system. So we just solved the problem by elevating our pad a couple feet. It's worked out great. We also did run about 30 feet of four inch PVC pipe to our septic tank so that we wouldn't have to attach six straight RV sewer hoses in a row, which is what we were doing we previously. Did have that. So now we only have to use one. And now we have like five extra RV sewer hoses. So if anybody wants a used yeah. RV sewer hose, just give us a call. I know that's what everyone wants for the holidays coming up in six months. We also installed our lovely sunshade and you can check out a video on it here. And we promised in that video that we would fill you guys in on how it's been holding up. So how has it been holding up? Good. <laughs> that's all you need to know. So it's been three months since we put that sunshade up and it's doing really well, yeah. honestly. Uh, there are a couple things that we've had to change on it. The sunshade is not as porous as we thought it would be and it doesn't drain water as well as we thought based upon you know the Amazon reviews on it, so. Never believe anything you see online unless it comes from a little bit unhitched. You know that 136% of Airstreams ever built their stair on the road today? That's fact. As Sam mentioned, the sunshade is not as porous as we thought. So when the water was draining off, it was draining straight onto our doormat, which was not great. 
and immediately yeah. opened the door and you're just like Phew. what we should have installed was like shampoo and conditioner that like as soon as you open the door just like, Phew. Phew, hits you and then yeah. you could rinse off but what we ended up doing was just moving one of the eyelets down so that there's a little bit more slope on the sunshade and now the water is draining off the pad which is great but it's draining kind of right into the dirt right outside of the pad so we just ended up buying some flagstone pavers essentially laying them down and now the water drains onto the pavers it's not eroding our dirt which is great and um it actually works well because now we're not tracking as much dirt into the trailer when we come in my coach says if you're not getting dizzy when you're warming up you're doing it wrong so we'll put the link for that sunshade in the description down below if anybody's interested, if we haven't scared you away from putting one in. Just one thing to know, I know in the installation video we talked about we would be taking this sunshade down for any moderate to severe weather, and we still are standing by that. We did have that massive storm, and you can see more about that in the original installation video. That was like a week after we put it up, and we actually haven't taken it down since then. We've had some pretty moderate thunderstorms blowing through in the afternoon, and that thing has done just fine. The secret for us is just getting it as tight as possible. If it's pretty loose, then it gets really heavy with rainwater and then that thing really starts to shake so if we have anything major coming through again we're just gonna pop up there and, yeah. and take it down we put a hammock down by the marsh and we also put in a fire pit and the fire pit has been great for s'mores and drinking beer if you didn't know we like beer and the hammock has been great too I love to go out there and read when the gnats aren't awful and want to eat you alive So we also got really crafty and we built a step coming into the trailer, partly because our original Airstream step is still broken. What are you looking at me? No. Oh, I broke the step <laughs> I and the step. I also haven't fixed it yet. So kind of double whammy there. In my defense, we had always planned on putting a little porch step yeah. on our home base because we didn't really want to utilize our Airstream step all the time, especially if it's like sitting out in a humid, rainy climate but we're gonna get that fixed here pretty quick. We'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, but the step that we did build works great and it's also fantastic because I get to put cute little plants on it. So I truly get to channel my inner Joanna Gaines. So thank you for the inspiration, Joanna. Shout out to Joanna, wow. We should dress up as them for Halloween. That could be a good costume. That actually would be good because you kind of look like Chip. And I kind of look like Joanna because she has dark hair. You don't Ooh. know what Chip looks like? I do. But okay. his beard's like kind of like your red beard. Hmm. One of my absolute favorite parts of the yard is the garden. This was something that I've been really looking forward to because when you live in a trailer, you are moving around and so you don't get the luxury of having a garden. And it has been so nice to be able to walk outside and get some lettuce, a tomato, some jalapenos. We have lots of jalapenos um, and strawberries. I think Fenton actually likes the strawberries more than us. It took him about a week to find them. And now he's obsessed. He's obsessed. This is a big shot. If you are gonna do a similar RV home base, there's a lot of things that come into play. We did some rearrangement of the, the fencing and the gates up top to accommodate being able to pull a trailer in and out. We are on a septic system as we talked about. You do have a leach field that is very large. It's actually approved for up to like a four bedroom house. So it does take a substantial amount of area. And if you know anything about leach fields, you can't drive over those. So that was one challenge for us is like, how do we get the trailer in and out without driving over that leach field? We came up with a solution to keep people off of it. And that was, we took these old four by four posts that we just had lying around and we put these little solar lights on them and then just went and bordered our driveway with it so not only did that provide a little bit of light at night it kind of makes you feel like you're walking into a resort which yeah. is kind of cool but it was also very functional because it keeps people from driving off of our leach field i still feel like we're trying to figure out ways to best utilize that spot up there because it's a good chunk of land if you guys have any ideas or suggestions of what we could put up there let us know we thought about horseshoes but that's kind of heavy you can't put you know you can't build anything on it you can't put any big bushes or anything that are gonna have a woody root system so suggestions ideas please drop them below we might just leave it as is but if we have a brilliant idea yeah you can play some badminton up there I don't know someone floor us floor us with a good idea ah! oh I put in too much training for a performance like that so I think overall, one of the hardest parts about having this land and doing the projects is not so much the projects. I actually really love the projects. I think it's more so the stuff and the tools that we have accumulated because of said projects and because of said land, which is crazy. Isn't it kind of funny that things that we actually need, we feel bad about yes. getting like a lawnmower and shovels. And like shovels. these are things that we need 
for our projects. But every time we go to Lowe's and buy something, we're like, ooh. ooh do we actually need that? Mm -hmm. Yes, we actually do need a lawnmower. So, so we've actually accumulated a small shed worth of yard working material and things like that, mm -hmm. which is this little portable shed. It's called a Shelter Logic Shed. We can probably leave yeah, the link for that down there. below. Yeah. If anybody wants like a portable shed, it's worked out really great. And we filled it with stuff. Yes. Did you see my eye twitch when I did that stuff? Oh. Yeah. I would love it if we had like an actual sit down mower that we didn't have to push up and down this half acre lot every two weeks. But it is a fantastic workout, especially in the middle of the summer. I think I went into heat exhaustion last time. Yeah. It's kind of funny. The Our neighbors all have these nice mowers where they pay somebody to do it. And we're out there with this little thing from Lowe's pushing it around. With their stupid bucket hats. We have bucket hats. So we look really cool. What are you doing right now? I'm gonna go save the planet and recycle. So. Good for you. Okay, so as promised, what do we not like about our RV home base? Definitely the one thing that stands out to me that we don't like is the lack of shade, mm -hmm. which is crazy because we have this huge oak that sits behind us. When we were planning out our, our pad where we we're gonna put it, we wanted to put it, you know, obviously uphill from the septic tank, but two, we wanted to put it close enough to that oak so that we would, you know, get some shade from it. But we also didn't want to put our pad right next to the tree because if you get any huge storms that blow through, you got limbs coming down from that thing, you're gonna demolish your airstream. We also put in that sunshade. So we have multiple things that we've done to increase the shade, but in South Carolina in the summer, time that sun just is merciless who won the cornhole game everyone has been uh, sitting on the edge yes. of their seats i know the winner of the cornhole game was sam playing sports against your husband who is very good at every single sport including sports that he's never played before is very challenging and i will tell you i have beat sam in two things none of them are sports jenga once out of i kid you not probably 500 plus games and then settlers of Catan once out of probably 200 plus games I'm getting all worked up just thinking about it, but Marriage. I still love you. Thank you. But it's annoying. Marriage. Marriage. <laughs> we like sports. <laughs> we do get a lot of questions about what our next project is going to be, and I guess we can tell them. Yeah. Our next project is going to be... We're I think our audio may have just cut out there. Oh, shoot. What a bummer. Well, I guess you guys will just have to stick around to see what happens next. Until next time, happy trails. Happy trails, guys. Kind of a tough day out there for you yeah. today. Uh, it was not my best performance, I'm gonna be honest. You know, I trained hard this year and I think my training really, really let me down. So we've got some things to work on for next year. Um, some good goals are gonna come back. Better, stronger, faster, more power. What does cornhole mean to me? When I have to play against Sam, it means defeat because I usually lose. So now that you've won the cornhole tournament, what do you what do you plan to do? I'm gonna celebrate. I'm gonna go to Disney World probably. I think we can get some discount tickets because they want to see like you know successful athletes there. Probably stay at Fort Wilderness. I've heard you can uh, have a campfire there and roast some hot dogs. So that sounds pretty fun. You want to see me juggle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>